So I'm going to go ahead and start the recording. We're going to go ahead and get started and people can fill in as they show up. Um, this is breakout room four. So hopefully that's where you're supposed to be or where you wanted to be. We're going to do how to build an effective flex time in your school day. And our presenter is Nate. And Nate, I do not want to butcher your last name. So I will let you, I will let you tell them your last name. It is Nimi. Okay. I would have butchered it. So I understand. You. Everybody does. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to put them in the chat. I will monitor the chat throughout um, this presentation. And I just wanted to welcome you. Thanks, Sharon. I appreciate it. Uh, um, as she said, I'm Nate Nimi. And um, a real quick bio on myself. This is my 31st year in education. Um, I actually recently, this past year, retired from public education as a, I was a principal at Dixie Heights High School, and before that I was an assistant principal at Ryle High School, um, and so I'm currently in a back in the classroom at uh, St. Henry High School, it's a private school in Northern Kentucky, and I currently teach three science classes, and then I do a half time. So I'm excited about talking about flex time. This is my third school that um, has had a flex time in their school day or have implemented a flex time. So I've been through a few of the iterations and, and some of the things that can help you build a uh, quality intervention time in your school day. So whether you're kind of starting off, uh, getting started on it, or you are doing it and you want to get it better, um, we'll talk about some of those things that help with that uh, in the session. And then uh, as part of this too, at the school, two schools, and now the third school I've worked at, we have utilized a, um, a tool that helps with management of your um, flex time. So it's a way, it's a tool that enables you to have students have flexibility and teachers have autonomy in regards to what to offer during the flex time. And so we'll talk about that and I'll show you a little bit of that uh, towards the end as we talk about how to do all that kind of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share uh, my screen and my, uh, what I'm gonna share on my screen is also in the resources, just my um, Google slides uh, that'll, that'll show. So let me do that real quick and then we'll continue. If you do have questions, uh, you can unmute yourself if you want or you can put yourself um, ask a question in the chat, and we'll try to monitor that uh, as we go. So let me. Yes. All right. So um, as I said, um, in thinking about your flex time in your school, uh, one of the key things that happened when we added flex time. So I started off um, at Ryle High School and we um, started going to PLC conferences with Solution Tree. If any of you guys are uh, aware of Solution Tree conferences, they are the kind of the gurus of, of collaboration. Um, we went to that and through that time, um, we determined that we needed to have some kind of flex time in there. So um, in my experiences at my three schools, um, we have been able to reduce student failures. Um, in one school, we went from 19% to nine. Uh, we went from 26% to 21%, and then COVID hit, and it kind of messed everything up a little bit uh, in my next school at, at Dixie Heights. Um, we really, in education, are trying to find ways to empower students in their own learning, take ownership of their learning, where do they need the help, what do they need to do, so this process allows them to do that. Uh, we also want to support students to take more challenging classes. One of the byproducts of having a good flex time is students are more willing to take on AP classes, uh, honors classes, because they're gonna, they know they're going to get in-school support for that. And then um, special education, obviously, is a big thing for all of our schools. Um, this flex time gives the opportunity for, um, for our special education uh, teachers to work with their caseloads and smaller groups outside the classroom um, allows them to do some uh, additional things there. So we'll talk about those kind of things as we go along. My contact information is in here. And again, my quick bio uh, for that. So why do you need a flex time? So as I said, in our professional learning community journey, so uh, about 10 years ago, we went to a uh, conference and through that conference, really talking about how do we improve on our instruction? How do we empower teachers? Um, what do we look at our curriculum and our standards uh, with that? And so what we determine is we need a collective response to student learning. And we have to be able to uh, impact all students. 
And so we really started working on collaborative teams. So the two high schools, Ryle and Dixie, were both large schools. The current school that I'm at, St. Henry, is a smaller school. So we're adapting. It's a little bit harder to have those uh, grade level um, uh, collaborations or content level collaborations like algebra one teachers and English one teachers, et cetera. But we're working through that process and trying to find that time. Um, part of why we need flex time is to be able to align the curriculum so students are getting uh, the same experience regardless of the teacher they're having in terms of that content. Uh, the team is able to establish the standards and they can support, support all students and it gets away from my students, but it's our students and not just my students and how they're doing. So as I said, I have experience with the implementation, so the process that goes through to get it started at a school. And so uh, we want to kind of talk about that. So with the flex time, it all started with the four essential questions of a PLC. And those questions, the first thing is, what do we expect students to learn? And so these are our essential standards. And so everything that we do in terms of our school and working with professional learning communities is we are gonna answer these four questions in all of our team meetings and all of our content meetings is what, is we, what do we expect students to learn? And you really get down to those essential standards, the things that are the most important. There's a lot of, there's so many standards that are out there that it might take you 23 years to get through them all. So uh, really establishing what the essentials are is very important in terms of this work. Uh, the second thing is, second question is, how will we know when they've learned it? And that's where you get into your formative assessments. You talk about every teacher can do those small formative assessments, determine where they're at, but they can also do common formative assessments with their team and what they're doing. You can do larger assessments well, uh, as well. But the flex time is best when you do those small formative assessments to get a read on where students are. Because the next question is, is how do we respond when students don't understand it? So for example, in my class uh, this past week, I'm a chemistry teacher. Uh, we're doing balanced chemical equations. We did a quick four question formative assessment. Through that assessment, I was able to determine I've got eight students that tomorrow will be coming into my flex time, eight students out of 36 that I had in those two classes. And those eight students are gonna get extra help because they showed in the formative assessment that they didn't understand it. It's something I should be doing in my classroom, but I'm now going to do it during flex time so I can um, don't have to hold everybody back in that regards. And the other thing is, is how do we respond when kids already know it? And that's where through this flex time and a good sound flex time, you can offer enrichment opportunities and things that uh, students can go further with if they already understand it. So as you're implementing um, these questions and when I went through the solution tree, in order to answer question three, it all becomes about time. And there's a book um, that you can see there about time. Um, and this is where we discovered how we can maybe change our school day to include time within the school day to have the help. Traditionally, a lot of times we try to offer the help outside of school, before school or after school tutoring. Some people do lunchroom type of stuff. Um, but if to really make an impact and where you make the huge impact is finding that time within the school day. So where do you find the time? The first thing is, as you as a school and as a leader have to decide it's gotta be a priority. And so then you've gotta have those conversations with your leaders in the school because it's gonna be important to get buy-in from everybody else. Why do we need this time? We need to build this time in because we can't service kids after school. Today's world, kids have to go home. They've gotta they got work, they gotta watch their younger kids. There's no transportation. You, once the school day ends, you lose the power to help the kids because you cannot guarantee they're going to be there. So you've got to build that time. So that's a process and, and it's something that I've experienced, obviously, um, and I can, you know, help you with ideas. You can contact me and we can talk about that. But where else do you, how do you find that time once you have those conversations? You got to take minutes off their period. Um, so if you're like we were in, in, in one school, we were in a six period day. So we had to drop our, our times from 60 minute periods to 52 minute periods. Um, so the classes uh, dropped eight minutes. Um, we'll talk about the teacher's aspect of that and what that means. But that's an area. When I was at Dixie Heights High School, uh, when I went there and was implementing this, uh, we had four lunch periods. Um, and I was looking around, I was like, man, I think we could do this in three rather than four. And by reducing it to three lunch periods rather than four, we chopped off several minutes that was enabled us to not lose as many minutes in our, in our class schedule. We had a five, 
period trimester schedule. And so uh, because of the shorter trimester, teachers were really worried about losing that time. So that was a way that we were able to do that. Um, passing time in between classes, traditionally you're five minutes. Can you do it in four? What's your school schedule like? You can gain some minutes that way. Um, and we think about flex time 30 to 40 minutes as the recommended uh, length of time. So you want to try to find between 30 and 40 minutes to do your flex time. So discussion points and my experiences with this and trying to establish this is number one, the reason we're doing it is we're trying to support all students. All too often in traditional flex time, it is geared mainly towards your intervention work or you're trying to uh, adapt somehow to get a group of students to have some extra time, but what does everybody else do? And everybody else turns into really not a whole lot. So um, the discussion points is, is we need to flex time because we have to support all students. All students need our help. They may not need it all at the same time, but we need to get the help. The, the help with that comes with content. We need the content support. Obviously, if I'm teaching chemistry and I've got to get those chemistry concepts in, um, I need to be able to support the students in understanding that. You also have academic deficiencies. You have students who read below grade level or their math skills aren't where they need to be and therefore it's causing problems and other things. So again, why do we have a flex time? Because we can provide some opportunities to get some academic deficiencies brought up. Social, emotional, mental health, huge thing with our schools. Um, with the flex time um, at two of the schools I was at, we had Mondays was basically designated for social, emotional learning lessons. And so within that 30 minute period, you're, you're every Monday, you're having those. We set it up where uh, teachers uh, had the same students on Mondays all year long. Um, you could do it a couple of ways where you could have them follow them the four years, you're building the relationships, the mentoring, um, that helps with uh, having somebody in the building for that. But then you can also do uh, counseling lessons through there. The guidance counselors can do small groups. Um, there's a variety of things that could be done there. Special education wise, for our special education teachers, you know, to get that additional support, they're able to pull their caseload specifically to them, uh, depending on how your special education operates, but that gives them an extra 30 minutes to, uh, to work individually or maybe in small groups with content support. It could be uh, some kind of progress monitoring tool. It could be something of that nature. Uh, we and two of our schools freed our special ed teachers up on those Mondays, they didn't have a group of students on Monday, so they had additional time because we know in special ed, you got all the ILP, IEP documentation, all the progress monitoring gave them um, enrichment opportunities um, are available. So you can go and, and you can do additional uh, enrichment things. Um, you could do clubs. Um, I know one of the schools has, it has one day, it's a club day. And so all the students are, pick a club to go to, it helps with student engagement. And so if I want to have a, a club that all kids can be a part of, you can build that into this time and, and have that process. And the AP courses, obviously, um, when you, we had a situation at Rao where our AP courses were an hour and a half. So students had to come in a half hour before school or maybe half hour after. We were able to kind of link the class with our flex time. So then they could spend flex time rather than having to stay after school or before school. It could be built in either before or on the back end of the flex time. So you can get creative with that as well. And then the last thing, as I said, student engagement, club activities, uh, all that type of stuff. So when you think about discussion points, obviously the first thing and you're building a flex time, you're planning. It feels like it's gonna be extra planning for me. And in all honesty, it shouldn't be extra planning. It should be something that we are doing in our classroom anyway. We're just providing an opportunity for them to do it in a smaller group with a specific group of students who are struggling or not keeping up with the others. So you're getting that extra time. We, that's tier one, tier two instruction. We should be doing that anyway. And so with that formative assessments, then you're able to, um, to uh, take what you should be doing in class anyway and just taking that to the smaller group of students um, in the flex time opportunity. The other thing is, is you're taking minutes away from me. You're, you're, you're reducing our class size. And so with that, there's not enough time to get through my curriculum. But in reality, 
um, you're not losing the time. You're using your time more efficiently because now instead of taking class time out to review and help other students who are getting behind, you're able to do that um, at a different time. So, so we have found in our schools that it doesn't hurt our pacing at all. It actually can help in many regards because you're getting that time uh, to you. Uh, some concerns about a forced curriculum, and that's when we talk about the RTI work or the things of that nature. Um, are you going to tell me I have to do certain things? And I'm a big believer in giving the autonomy to the teachers. Teachers are the, are the most powerful person in the room. Um, they're the experts. We want to really empower them to use their skills the best as possible. So it's not about forcing any curriculum on them. But the one thing that's really a good selling point um, in this process is the more you can provide teacher autonomy, so they get to create things based on their individual teacher needs or their team needs. And ideally in a larger school, you have, for example, your two or three chemistry teachers, they're working together. We built in our schedule a planning period for those content. So every third, you know, third period planning, my chemistry teachers were on a planning period. They met once a week to talk about what, where they are in their curriculum, what are they doing with that? But most importantly, what kids do we have that are not getting things and how can we share our expertise with them? And this system that I'm gonna show you enables them to create those opportunities for teachers to be able to do that. Um, the other thing was this, is a sped caseload time. You know, at Dixie Heights, our special education um, test scores and, and everything really uh, were really, really good the last couple of years. And I attribute it to the flex time that we put into place. Now, with students, students absolutely love it. And it's because they get more freedom than they are ever used to because they get to own their education. They get to decide during this 30 minutes where I'm going and what needs I need. And what we're doing is, is we're providing them student choice. That helps with the culture and the climate of the students. And then they, in process, as we know, students who struggle, they need executive functioning. So this is an opportunity for them to plan ahead because in this system, they can plan five days ahead of time to what they wanna to go to. They're making those decisions. They're deciding, do I need math help? Do I need science help? Do I need social studies help? What's coming up? So you're teaching those executive functioning skills. And then the big thing is, is they know they're getting some academic support for the more rigorous classes. And so they are, teach students are more willing to take those more rig rigorous classes. But it gives them the power of choice. Where do I need help today? And I think that's really important. So we think about creating time. We want teachers to collaborate, obviously. So uh, we built in um, planning time for our teachers. You can use planning time during flex. We were able to do some of our, we couldn't get everybody on the on uh, common planning. So we took one day a week where they got 30 minutes to work together uh, during this time, which helps. Um, for the time, it helps with the teachers to be able to uh, answer the, the two last two questions of the PLC. What, how do we respond when they don't know it? And what do we do if they do? And then it's for students to get specific help. So we're creating the time to be able to do these things. So ultimately, we're trying to meet the needs. We want to meet the needs of all students. We want to try and meet all the department needs. We want to try and do our interventions. And we want to try and do our enrichments. So the flex time is trying to meet all those needs. And so I want to show you a tool. Um, this is called Student Optim Optimized Services. Um, and this is an online tool that um, provides student choice. It provides teacher or team ownership of those choices and it provides administrative assistance and guidance, and it allows for a tracking system where students are during the flex time because they are able to choose where they go. There's an attendance. You know where they're going. When I got to, to St. Henry, uh, they had a flex time, but they had no tracking system. We had kids everywhere and had no idea where they were, and that's a, that's a safety issue, and so we were able to implement this mid-year because we wanted to be able to track where they were, and things have been going really, really well with that. So uh, basically, it's a website. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the screen so that I can share with you um, something a little. I'm going to show you examples of what this looks like. And so I'm going to first off show it to you from a student perspective. And so I'm going to share my screen again. I'll try and get to what's this. So when a student, when a student logs on, this is what their screen looks like. 
So as you can see, today's the 18th, you got the 19th, 20th, and 24th. So that's the next several days. This student on the 18th has chosen a workshop. And the reason I know they chose it is because right here, priority says open. That means the student chose to go to this teacher, AP Government Politics. And so during Flex, they know they're gonna to go to this room for that. The 19th, which is tomorrow, every student is defaulted to an area. Uh, we call that silent reading at this particular school, um, but they're gonna default. If they make no selection whatsoever, they're gonna be housed in this place. Um, and what we try and do is, is, is create where they want to go to select something else. But to select something else, so if I go to uh, this plus sign, I hit a, a plus sign and I wanna say, I wanna go to my algebra teacher. I'm gonna click on this and you can see that all the departments are represented here. And so students, uh, teachers create opportunities and you can see the different opportunities are there. Now, teachers can provide that opportunity. So for example, administration, we have these all open areas where any kid could select that. The AB honor roll is actually limited to where kids who are only on the AB honor roll can see it. So kids that aren't on there cannot. Um, but if I select, for example, I want to go see uh, my math teacher, I can click on that. You can see it comes up in the screen. I click change workshop. And when I do that, you can now see that it changed up here and it's open. Notice that on Friday, this teacher has selected this student to come see them for test corrections. They put a note to it. This is what we're going to do. See where it says close. That means the student cannot change that option. They can't overrule the teacher. The teacher selected them. They've got to go to this particular class for that. So before I go on, I want to ask, see if there's, I'm going to show you what the teacher sees, but does anybody have any questions in regards to what a student might see or any questions in regards to that? Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing real quick so I can change to a new screen, which is going to show what the teachers see. So this is a teacher's vantage point, and with a teacher's vantage point, um, one of the things that that happens is this workshops are created and let's say that I want to assign some students to that workshop. So I click on this over here are all my class periods that I have. These are the this is my schedule. If I want to look at the Friday the 20th, that's the date I want to select here in my department are the workshops that are available for students. And so I want to say okay I'm going to um, I want to put a student into one of my colleagues' geometry session. And we've talked about it and said, okay, here's what we do. So I pull up my uh, algebra, let's say my algebra two honors. And you can see here, these are the students in my algebra two honors class. You can see what all those students have selected. And if I said, okay, I want to take this student who is now right now going to the auditorium on Friday and this student who's going to the auditorium on Friday, I want to change them and come to me. Anybody that's open, I can change. Anybody who's not open, you can see here's an administration, they, I would not be able to change that. But I select that workshop on that date, I click assign students. And when I do that, now you can see those two students have now been updated. Notice it says closed. This means to the student that the teacher has selected you and you will now be uh, have to go to that class. I can take attendance as the teacher once I've established that. I go here to take attendance. I click on the day. So it's, today's the 18th. These are the students that are in my class. If I uh, hit this, that means that they're present. If I click off of it, that means they're not. I click save attendance. And now we take attendance through the system and it's cross check with the administration to make sure no students are uh, skipping or anything like that. At any point in time, I can find students. So if I, I need to know where a student is, great administratively. Um, so I've got a student who uh, I need to know where they are. I can click this find student and any student in the building on this date, I can click in, you know, the first uh, couple letters when I do that, then it would come up uh, where that student is. So then I can, I can show and, and find call that room or whatever it may be uh, with that. 
There are uh, quite a few other features that are available, but this is kind of the nuts and bolts in terms of what teachers use on a regular basis. And that was basically what students saw as well. So um, let me go one more thing and then we'll open up for some more questions if you have any. So um, let's share the screen again. We're gonna go to... I want to go to, uh, okay, there we go. Sorry about that. I'm trying to navigate between different things. There we go. So this is, uh, again, what the student sees. Um, and that's what the teacher sees. It's a web-based program. Um, I did the demonstration. So contact information is on here. I know it's thrown a lot at you. Again, I've got a lot of experience in regards to this. Um, I partner with a guy by the name of Bill Martin who set up the program. Um, he's on this as well. So he knows what we've talked about. Um, but if you have any questions in regards to how do you do that, support you wanna do that, I'm, you can contact me at that email. We can set up a time to, to talk and share. All right, any questions? Try to value your time. I know I ran through that pretty quickly. All right, if you have uh, come up with something that you have, you know, please contact me. My information is on the slide. Um, you can send me an email, you can give me a call. Um, we can set up a time to talk uh, privately about it, but I'm a firm believer in the flex time, the PLC work. Uh, so if you need any support, any of that kind of stuff, I'm, I, up here in Northern Kentucky, I try and create uh, principal networks where we, we sit and talk about challenges that we have in the school. And uh, I'm always willing to talk to different people. Great. Thank you so much, Nate. Appreciate the presentation. No problem. You guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks, you too.